we use them on a daily basis. They commemorate some of our most treasured national symbols. And recently, they got a fresh makeover. If you guessed our Canadian currency, you guessed right. As early as 1645, fur traders used currency in the form of silver coins and playing cards. This is considered to be the first type of paper money used in North America. As colonization expanded, there was a growing need for a uniform national currency. Actually, the first paper money in Canada were playing cards. Uh, what happened were the, the colonial authorities in New France at the time didn't have enough coins coming in to pay their troops, so the intendant of New France uh, took playing cards, signed the back of the card, gave them a value, and that's how they paid the troops waiting for fresh coins to arrive from, uh, from France. The following decades witnessed the emergence of several different types of currencies, including army bills, bank tokens, and even gold pieces. By the mid-1800s, the country saw an increase in cross-border trade with the U.S., and the demand for a national currency intensified. But it wouldn't be until after Confederation in 1867 that real progress would be made towards establishing a national currency. For a short time after Confederation, the province of Canada's notes served as the Dominion of Canada's first national currency, and notes were dispatched from Ontario and Quebec to other provinces. Through the Bank Act of 1871, Parliament took control over provincial currency acts and laid the foundation for a uniform banking system. With the installation of the Dominion government, uh, the federal government in 1867, uh, the laws are slowly changing to, uh, um, to have the government uh, become the issuing authority of currency, taking that, uh, that uh, responsibility away from the chartered bank. Decades later, in 1934, the Bank of Canada was created and was given the responsibility to regulate the country's money supply and to promote the economic and financial welfare of Canada. Graham Ford Towers was appointed as the first governor of the Bank of Canada. The bank released its first series of notes in 1935 in denominations of $1 to $1,000. Chartered bank notes began to be replaced by Bank of Canada notes, and in 1944, the Bank of Canada became the sole issuer of Canadian paper money. What about Canadian coins, you ask? Those are produced by the Royal Canadian Mint at their facility in Winnipeg. I bet you didn't know that on occasion, the Mint produces coins for other countries. Before Confederation, early fur traders used British sterling coins. After Confederation in 1867, coins from the three former colonies, the province of Canada, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, continued to circulate until 1870. As more provinces entered Confederation, they dropped the colonial coins and adopted the national Canadian currency. In 1870, the first national coinage of the Dominion of Canada was issued in denominations of 5 cents, 10 cents, 25 cents, and 50 cents. The penny wasn't issued until 1876. The coins featured the head of Queen Victoria on one side and the value and date with a crowned maple wreath on the other side. Today, coins are designed with Canadian symbols, like our national wildlife or the blue nose schooner found on the 10 cent coin on one side and the head of Queen Elizabeth II on the other side. On October 21, 2004, the Royal Canadian Mint unveiled a 25 cent poppy coin. The coin features a red poppy in the center of a maple leaf above a banner reading Remember Souvenir. It was the first colored coin in general circulation in the world. Some of the most significant developments in Canadian currency were the withdrawal of the $1, $2 and $1,000 notes. The $1 and $2 notes were replaced by the loonie and the toonie. The $1,000 note was removed at the request of the RCMP because it was discovered that they were largely being used for money laundering and organized crime. After Confederation, the federal government is uh, passing laws to limit uh, different banknotes that the banks can issue. Uh, namely, uh, they stopped, uh, they prevented banks from issuing one and two dollar notes. 
So as a response to that, the charter banks decided to start printing uh, notes of six dollars, seven dollars, three dollars, uh, just to try to create as many combinations as possible without using a one or a two dollar note. Over the years, the Bank of Canada has issued several special series of banknotes. For example, in 1986, it released a set of banknotes known as the Birds of Canada series. Each bill featured a different type of bird on the reverse side of the note. I bet you didn't know that before 1935, Canadian banknotes were about 30% larger than they are today. Since 1954, the dimensions of the bills have been 6 by 2.75 inches. They were changed to their current size to save taxpayers on the cost of printing. You may think that the process of redesigning our money every few decades is to give it a fresh look. While that may be part of the reason, the other side of the coin has to do with security concerns. Every time our currency is updated, new security features are incorporated into the design to deter counterfeiters from reproducing it. Some of the most prominent security features over the past few decades have included serial numbers, raised ink, holograms, and hidden images and numbers. In 2004, the number of counterfeit bills in circulation peaked with over 500,000 fake notes. Since then, counterfeiting has decreased annually with only about 53,000 notes passed in 2010. There are also other reasons for redesigning notes. One of the most significant updates took place in 1986, when paper notes were redesigned to include features to help the visually impaired. And in 1937, bills were officially changed from a unilingual to a bilingual format. An interesting uh, fact about the first series of Bank of Canada notes from 1935 is that they were separately printed in French and English, and so they would circulate uh, primarily in their respective languages uh, in different parts of the country. Today, the design and distribution of banknotes rests with the Bank of Canada, with final approval from the Minister of Finance. In June 2011, the Government of Canada unveiled its latest series of notes. These are the first Canadian notes made of polymer instead of paper. They're meant to be more secure, more durable, and more innovative banknotes. Well, the bank's been uh, undergoing uh, a lot of research and development in currency in the past few years and uh, trying out different substrates. Uh, they found that polymer was ideal for printing the new series of banknotes. Uh, primarily uh, it permits to uh, improve the security of the note with new security features in the uh, in the polymer substrate and uh, of course the, 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 the substrate itself is more difficult to, to, to reproduce. In March 2012, Canadians across the country said a sentimental goodbye to the penny. The last one cent coin was minted on May 4, 2012 and it's another example of how Canadian currency has evolved with the times. And now you know.